The Lapa is a door, a door post always, yeah. So in New York City, where everyone has a fire escape and some people use it as a balcony, would you have to put them as balcony, a balcony? Um, this is a very balcony is a very good discussion. I believe we're going to see it towards the end of the chapter. Okay. Balcony is a big question of which side of the mezuzah depends if it's fully enclosed, not fully enclosed. Well, but like if someone in New York were to use their fire escape yeah. as a proper balcony, sure. yeah. would you then have to put a mezuzah on the window? Because the window there's no door. It. No, no, because like right here you have a window going to the fire escape. We don't use the fire escape, but if someone were yeah. to use it right that here, way. Way. This is it? No, you don't put a mezuzah because there's no door. Okay. It has to have an actual door post. Two mezuzahs and a mash cave. We'll see today, actually. Um, yeah, so even if you have a bunch of rooms and a bunch of doors in each room, the halacha is each door requires its own mezuzah. Not only doors, but even gates. You have gateways to cities, or if you have a garden, you have a chatzah, you have a some property and it has, it's enclosed, there's a gate, one has to put a mezuzah. Which side do you put it on? On the left or the right? On the right, correct. On the right, yamin ha nichnas, the right of the person going in. Now, what's the, oh. Um, that's, no, we're answering Mitzvah Shem, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, is there a difference between a righty and a lefty? No, it always has to be a min and So, as we learned yesterday, if you have two houses and you have, there's a question, because they share a door between the two houses and it's used equally. Let's say it's used equally. What do you do? Go you go by the hinges. Heck, it's here. And as mentioned yesterday, the min chabad is to always go by the hinges except for the exception is the entrance and if there's a door without a window we're going to leave that but there is a difference of opinion on that and i actually do want to share a story with the Allah pertaining to the hinges there's a story with the rabbi rashab if i'm not mistaken and there was a prominent rabbanim that came to visit and they saw seemingly the mezuzah is on the wrong, wrong side so he answered that he has a Maseira, it's passed on from the Nebeim that no, it's not on the wrong side because we follow the proper things to follow the direction of the hinges. So even though theoretically, let's say, was used for majority to, for something else, whatever it is, it could have come out to be put on the other side, but being that the hinges were following the opposite direction, he said, this is what you do, and uh, this, this is what we follow. So both ways are 100% correct. There's no right or wrong. There's a difference of opinions. And Chabad, this is the, the Masada that we have. Now, where do you put the mezuzah? Where do you fix the mezuzah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the beginning of the third top, exactly. What happens if you put it too low? Yes, yeah, exactly. You have to take it off and you have to make a bracha. What, and you can't put it within a tefach of the highest part, what happens if you did? That's right, without a bracha. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and if I have space on the actual mezuzah, on the doorpost, should I put it more out or more in? Yeah. More out. As long as it's within a tefach, you put it as out as you could because it covers more. You have more coverage, so to speak. Um, yeah, we mentioned yesterday, you should put it a little bit tilted, the top going in, the bottom facing out a little bit. If there's no space, no problem, you can put it straight, 100% fine, not a problem. And I believe there are communities, I believe the Sephardic communities, look at Chilo, they put straight. So either way is not a problem at all, it's just a matter of minhag. What bracha do you make? Oh, yes, the claim is that. I forgot one thing. What happens if you only put a nail on the top and not the bottom? Yeah, it's not fixed. It's that's considered hanging and you have to actually affix it. You have to put it on the bottom too. Double-sided tape, it doesn't say over here, but double-sided tape is good also. 
The best is obviously nails. If you don't have nails, it's still okay with double-sided tape. Oh, what happens if it fell by itself? Yeah, you put it back with a bracha. What happens if you're taking it to check? What do you do? Yes, within 24 hours, you put it back up, no bracha. Over 24 hours, a bracha is recited. Okay, this is very good. Everyone is uh, either have very good memories or doing chazara, one of the two. <laughs> Hopefully both. Okay, so now we're holding by the eighth halacha, halacha ches. Everyone has it? Which page is 74. 74. Everyone has it? Okay, ches. Bektas sha'arim yishpesach katam etil ashar hagadu. By some of the gates, they have beside them a Pesach Katan, a small doorway, Eitzel Shaykh HaGad, which is beside this big gate. The Derech HaPesach HaKatan, Yeitzim V'Nichnasin, and this door is actually used. People go in, people go out. But the gate itself is only used from time to time. It's not uh, the main doorway which is used. The Kivin Shehem Shnei Pesachim, the Beinem Amad Rechab Tafach, so here is a very important yisoyed foundation when it comes to these halachas. Over here, the example which is given is you have a big shag, you have a big gate, and beside you have a little doorway which people go in. So it's a big tircha to open the gate and close if you just want to go through. So over here we're saying that even though this big gate is only used from time to time, nevertheless, a mezuzah is required for the door and the gate. Now, over here, we said a very important detail. Why is that? Because there's a tefach in between one door to the next one. The fact that there's a tefach dividing them, that means it's considered two doors, and each one has its own mezuzah. This is a very practical thing if you have sometimes big buildings and you have many doors, 770 by the men's entrance down, downstairs. You have doors lined up right one side the other. So as long as there's a tefach, eight centimeters, between each door, then each door requires its own mezuzah. So that's something important. So over here, it's always speaking about a shah, but the truth is it's not just with the shah, it's with anything, as long as it's separate doorways, then each door on its own does require a mezuzah. Now, let's say you are living in an area which is not so safe, or you're going on the Tzayim and somebody asks you to put up a mezuzah, but, or you have a relative that's living in the area that's, that there aren't so many hidden and they're afraid that if they put up a mezuzah, it's gonna get stolen. So what do you do? Oh, so there's two options. Yes, one, that's one of the options. So Tess. The Malkin Shesh Lacha Shema, in the place where you're afraid that it's going to, the mezuzah is going to be stolen. This does happen. <clears throat> so what do you do? If it's possible, My most ideal thing and I've heard this from people themselves when they were living in Russia back in the day when it was during the communist regime, where it was a sakana, it was literally a danger to put up a mezuzah. If the uh, government found out, they'd be in very big trouble. What do they do? They would engrave and carve into the doorpost and put the mezuzah within this carving. So as long as it's not, you didn't carve more than a tefach, it's still considered, it's still okay. So if you would put it just on the doorpost, you're afraid it's going to get stolen. Or in Russia, it would be much worse than just stolen. So you carve into the doorpost. You're, mm -hmm. You put it inside. So somebody passing in the street will have Dafka unless they're really looking for it. They're not going to see it. So the Malkin Sakana, the Malkin, you know, it's a not safe neighborhood. People steal, unfortunately. Then this is one of the eights as long as you don't go in a full tafah. Okay. What happens if you have a metal doorpost and you really can't 
there's nothing to, to do. Even if you're going to cut a hole, but there's not, there's nowhere to put it. It's a hollow area. So what do you do? Then you put it on the inside. Now, there's an exception. On the inside means draw it. So here, so you have, I drew it a little bit thicker just to bring it out the way it looks. So the door closes usually, when you close it, it closes, let's say, here or here. But after the door is closed, the cavity of the door, there's still a place to put a mezuzah. So as long as you put it here, it's okay. But the Makoda is, it should, it should still be on the Pesach. On the post. On the post, yeah. yeah. So right, every doorway usually has this stopper that sticks out. So often, there's another side, and it's still within the post and the mashka at the top. As so long as it's like that, it's not a problem. Sometimes you don't have it. Sometimes you don't have it. So you have to see in each case you have to send a picture and to see where to put it. Is so, this to it or on the inside post? You have the to see it. Can you show us on the door? Yeah, sure. Oh, right there. Right here. Okay, so already this door is different. This door. The hinges are put in the way where it closes here, but sometimes it, close, it closes here. Yeah. So you can put it either here or here, because it's still within. Anywhere inside. Anywhere inside. On the door so it has to be on the post. Yeah. On the post inside. Exactly. Thank you. So that's the same, same idea. This is the front, this is the middle, and that's the back piece. So if somebody, if somebody's door doesn't, doesn't look like that, so the best thing to do is Baruch Hashem today for WhatsApp to send a picture. Turn around and um, to figure out to Mitzvah Hashem. But this is the general halacha. This is what you're looking out for. If there is any difference, then the best is to, to ask the question if it arises. <clears throat> yeah, so just to sum up. So there's two options. If somebody's living in a dangerous neighborhood or it's not the most dangerous neighborhood, but the building complex, you know, there's a few troublemakers that are really uh, out to make trouble. It does happen, unfortunately. So the best thing is, if it's possible, to engrave a little bit and to put the mezuzah there so it's not easily noticeable. Again, it's not so practical today with the metal doorposts. Fine, so you put it on the inside of the chassid chak. There's no other option. Yud, the tenth halacha. There was a question asked yesterday about uh, uh, closets. So this Allah is actually going to address this uh, question. Not every room or every house is required automatically to have a mezuzah. There's a requirement to have two posts and something on top of both of them. But not only that, there's a requirement of the size of the room, and this size is Dalit Amis al Dalit Amis. The im ain't by Dalit Amis al Dalit Amis. Avo, yesh by Kedemara Bea Dalit Amis al Dalit Amis. Kogain she arke yes al Rachbe, Esha who ogle, Esh emim de Chayev, Vish emim de Potter. So you need to have approximately six feet by six feet in order for it to be considered a room. Uh, which is obligated with a mezuzah. Now, what happens if you don't have a straight six feet? You have 12 feet by four feet. Six feet, I don't know. Three meters? Yeah, is that much? One meter is three feet? Also two, two by two, two meters by two meters, yeah. 
we have around two by two meters or six feet, or six feet however you calculate it. But if let's say you don't have actually straight six feet by six feet or two meters by two meters, however, it's four meters by, no, that, that would count. Yeah, let's make it uh, eight feet by 12 feet, which would be meters, three, six, seven, four meters and a half, but whatever, whatever it is, let's say you have the measurements, they have the, but it's in a different order, that's eight, six by six. So what do you do? So the truth is over here, it says there's two opinions. Some say it's Chayev, it's still obligated to have a mezuzah. Some say it's not obligated to have a mezuzah. In practice, being that there's a dispute, so Safek Brach is Lahakl, you don't make a Bracha, but you should still put a mezuzah. Now, specifically with a question by Klaus, as we know, there's Closets that do have the size, some closets don't have the size. The truth is, there is an opinion of the Chabud de Daniel. There is such an opinion that says that even though one does not have Dalit Amis, but it's used for storage, you put things there, it's, it's actually used, then it's high of the mezuzah. You actually do put a mezuzah regardless. If, you, if it's just a closet, you can't even go in, you just like. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Oh, okay. If it's so, according to this opinion, according to this opinion, if it's used for storage, small storage, you would put. In practice, most hold not like that. It actually has to have valid amis or valid amis. Some people are stringent; they do put even in such a in such a small room. However, the mainstream sack is not. And not to put. Not to put. Even if you walk in, but if it doesn't have the amount, it's not dollar amount, it's dollar amount, you do not put it. It's too small, you don't put it. So even if you actually walk in the walk in closet, but it's too small, you know, it's a small walk in closet, you do not put. If somebody still wants to put, they feel more comfortable, they have a mezuzah, no problem, just put it without a bracha. That's it. Okay, Yud Aleph, the eleventh halacha. This is also see all these halachas are very very practical. Does it have a picture by your print? Yeah. The eleventh halacha does have a picture. Yeah. Okay, very good. Eina Pesach Chayiv Mezuzah Ale Im Yesh Lashtei Mezuzahs. One another requirement for there to be a requirement for the mezuzah is the doorpost actually has to have two posts. And on top of that, it has to be at least 10 trachim, which is around 80 centimeters. It's not so high at all. And it has to have a mashkev. A mashkev means this part, the top part of the door, which is standing on the post. What is the side of trachim? The is around 80 centimeters. 80. 80. Yeah, around 80 centimeters. So it's not so much, it's actually a very small amount. Mm -hmm. As long as it has that amount and it has a post here, a post here, and on top, and Pesach, a doorway, which is required to have a mezuzah. Mm -hmm. And I feel in a mezuzah, my eighteen in a one, and even if the mezuzahs, which is, as we mentioned yesterday, the mezuzah doesn't just mean the scroll, but it means the doorpost also, even if it's made from Wood from stones, let's say you don't actually have official posts. It happens to be, you know, the door, the house is just carved in such a way that you have a post in practice, you actually have a post that itself is also required to have a mezuzah. Now, what happens this is very, very common. The im ein labais ala mezuzah achas, again, shemitzad ha echod ever ha kaisel. Okay, let's explain. So it's very, very common. You have a hallway in your home. 
right? A hallway. A hallway. Ah. Some people have, some people don't have. If you have a hallway, and on one side you actually have a one mezuzah, and on the other side is a wall. So we just said earlier you have to have two mezuzahs, two doorposts. Sometimes it's very common you have one doorpost and just a wall going straight. So the halacha is as follows. If the doorpost, the mezuzah, the doorpost is on the right side, you put without a bracha. But if the right side is just the wall, you do not put a bracha. Both without bracha? Both us. Oh, sorry, what did I say? I said you put without a bracha? Or a mistake. You do not put. <laughs> so if the doorpost, there's a picture here, but it's not. Uh, I don't think my job is going to be any better, but it's just uh, you have a wall. This is a hallway. This is a hallway. And then here you have, you know, let's do it like this. You're walking through the hallway. And over here, you actually have a doorpost. Whatever, that's a design, right? It's uh, it happens. The uh, corner here, and you have a doorpost. This is uh, the mash cap, this is on top. You walk through. So, being that the doorpost is on the right side, you put a mezuzah. Like, where is here? Probably. It's very common. Probably many houses have them like this. However, if main entry is from this side, and it comes out that your right side is the wall, you don't put a mezuzah on. So you have the exact same scenario. It all goes by what's right or left. So if the main entrance is from here and your doorpost is to the right, you put a mezuzah, no bracha. If the main entryway is through here and on the right side is a wall, you do not put a mezuzah at all. Wait, no, no mezuzah. If the doorpost is on the right, you put no bracha. If, if the door, if the uh, the wall is on the right, no no mezuzah at all. Yeah. It's just like like a doorway, a wall, and a wall here, and on top it's just the ceiling. Oh, so it's like just an, if it's just an entrance, but without the real mashkov. Without a mashkov? Mm -hmm. Oh, so according to the Kishul Shulchan Aruch, you would still put. Mm -hmm. So if it's by the entryway, you have the walls, but there's a corner before you go into the hallway, you put. Yeah, because that, the corner itself is considered. Yeah. Okay, so even if one doesn't remember the halachis, you know what to do exactly, it's okay, because when it comes to practical, if you're going to be somewhere, Put in a, a mezuzah by your own home or helping another you'd put up a mezuzah. As long as you know there's a question, it's not so simple. That itself is already a good thing. And uh, if it happens, you can always send a picture. And then uh, the rabbi will be able to, to tell you which side to put it on. But the main thing is, even if it, you don't grasp all the details and you remember them, whatever, it's fine. The main thing is, you know that there's a discussion about this. And it's a question to ask. Okay. Yud Beis. Ratoth Alacha. Yesh Lei Beis Mezuzes Ve'ein Loi Mashkev. You have two doorposts, but you do not have um, the top. What was it? Lentil. What does it say in English? Lentil? Lentil. 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 Okay, lentil. It's the top. Yeah, the top. Yeah. So you have two posts, but you do not have this lentil. You do not have a mashkif. Elosh, yeshalein, kippa, kimin keshes, a filodam, mezuzes, enlai elosh, kippa, misa, gelis, mina, arix. Okay, let's. You do not have. Now, the new scenario. Many apartment buildings, this is very common. So you have two doorposts, but you do not have an actual lintel. Instead, you have a design like this. So you don't actually have a proper mashkif. You do not have a proper lintel. This is how it is. 
Or you don't even have this, the whole thing is like that. You don't even have two doorposts, right? It's just an arch. Just an arch. Chase, what's the lot of Sorry? Like the, the, the side. Mashkov is the one on top, and the mezuzah is the one like this, the one standing. Oh. These two. This is the doorpost. The walls? Yeah. The walls, yeah. Okay, so what's the lock in such a case? Oh. So either you have the two mezuzahs, and it does not have a mashkov, it doesn't have a mashkov, it has Elish Yeshala and Kippa, it can mean Kashas, it has a Keep a little bit, like a, it looks like a, a rainbow. Oh, yeah, feel the guy, it doesn't even have the whole thing is just an arch. All the way through. So, so the whole thing is an arch. So, the whole thing is an arch. So, the whole thing is an arch. Simple. If in total height, there's 10 Fachim at least, which is, as we mentioned yes, uh, a few minutes ago, it's really not a lot, it's 80 centimeters. And there's four tfachim, which is also not a lot. It's required to have mezuzah. That's Correct, but it's still considered a. It's very small, yeah. Yes, it is very small. Dalit tfachim, which is 36 centimeters. Now, Another very interesting scenario. This is important because today there's many designs going around and you'll have fun scenarios. So again, just to recap, if you have 10 Fachim, 5 Fachim, you put 7 over here. 10 Fachim, 5 Fachim, you put. With a Bracha, yeah, it's 100%. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, the scenario is a little bit different. This is very common with new design homes or even old design homes. You have one side straight, but the other side goes like this. This is the wall, and this is also the wall, and this is the door, this is the entryway. It's a different design. It happens, right? Sometimes uh, you have such a design. So if this is the right, the straight one, so there's no problem. You put, uh, you put here. You need the Sorry. There needs to be a mashkov. Oh yeah, yeah, with mashkov. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it has a mashkov, right? So if the straight wall is on your right, so you have no problem. You put regularly, no problem. Mm -hmm. What happens if it's the opposite? What happens if? What happens if it looks like this? So according to the presenter, no, you wouldn't put. Oh, so here it says like this. So those the ace and the chanui is those stars the she ace and mezuzah aches min akaka ad hamashke that make one doorpost from the bottom from the ground all the way up until the lintel. The mezuzah aches she ain't a magia ad hamashke and the other one does not reach directly to the mashke. It goes in. So it's like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like this. Now, if the mezuzah is like this, it would be like so, ima mezuzah haktana hi mi yamin ha nichnas im hi gavaya sadatvachim nesim esa mezuzah ba. 
‫אם אין לגבי עשר הטווח, ‫הם לא יסתדרו עם הגרפה. ‫זה מאוד מעניין. ‫אם זה יהיה על פחות 80 סנטימטר, ‫זה יהיה על פחות סנטימטר. ‫ולכן, אם זה יהיה על פחות סנטימטר, ‫אם זה יהיה על פחות סנטימטר, ‫אם זה יהיה על פחות סנטימטר, ‫אז זה יהיה על פחות סנטימטר. Okay, and you always uh, count the entrance from the entrance door, I'd say, or? Yeah, yeah. Meaning uh, which side is considered yeah. right or left? Yeah. Yeah, from the entrance door, that's the majority that is going to be used. And if it's the right, is a straight one, so you put it there. Mm -hmm. But if not, then if this has, at least say, the center, you put it here. If it's too small, you put it there. That's it. Okay. Okay, that was simple. It's not that scary. Okay, you'd give me the thirteenth halacha. Yes, even the filo ein the lasses the pesach chay the mezuzah. The yes, even the be inon davka dalas. Halachin. This is a very interesting halacha. There's two opinions in the Rishonim whether or not a door is required. In order for you there to be a requirement to put a mezuzah, there's an opinion. One opinion holds you actually have to have a door. Any door post, doorway that has a door, that's what's required for mezuzah. No door, no requirement for mezuzah. This is one opinion. The other opinion is no, any door post, door or no door, it doesn't make a difference. There's a fact there's a door post, which is an entry. This is enough for having a requirement for a mezuzah. Now, because of this, is this difference of opinion, if somebody is still renovating their house or renovating it's a new construction, whatever it is, and one of the doors is actually going to eventually have a door, but not yet. So you should put up a mezuzah after the door is up. Because there's a halakha. Ta'asa v'loy min ha'asoy. What does that mean? It means at the moment without a door, according to one opinion, there is no obligation to have a mezuzah. So therefore, if the mezuzah is up without an obligation, then you put up the door, the oblig your obligation only started after you put the door and it comes out that you put up your mezuzah before you had an obligation to do so. That's a little bit confusing, right? Because sometimes the only reason I know that. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, you might need to renovate and you need to put the door somewhere and figure out if you should have a door or something. You should take it off. Exactly. Uh, you should take it off and put it back on after the door is on. So only, that, if only if it should be a door. Exactly. Only if it should be. Yes. Uh, yes. No, not Otherwise, uh, you put. Okay. Yeah. So this is a halacha. Most practically, you're going to see it by when you're doing renovations. That's otherwise, it's not such a practical thing. So, again, if you know that this doorpost, you are going to be putting up a, an actual door on it, even though right now it's not there, being that according to one opinion, right now there's no obligation to put it up, being that there's no door, according to this opinion, there's no door, there's no obligation. Therefore, when you actually put it up, According to one opinion, you didn't do the mitzvah yet because there's no obligation for it yet. Now, when the renovation is going to be finished, you're going to have the door. It's going to come out. You're going to have a mezuzah, which was already there before the obligation. This is called ta'asa v'loy min ha'asa. You have to do the mitzvah, and the mitzvah can't happen automatically. Because as soon as you put up the door, it's as if the mitzvah happened automatically because the mezuzah was there beforehand. That's considered... According to this opinion, that it's not uh, it's not good. So if it happens, 
take it off and put it on without a bracha. If not, if or you can wait for the door to be put on. So again, there are two opinions. In practice, there's many doorposts in, in a house specifically without doors. So they do require a mezuzah regardless. You do not make a bracha on them because according to one opinion, they, they're not required. The easiest thing when you're putting up the mezuzahs, you make a bracha on one, the front entrance, and you have in mind everything. And that's it, it's the easiest way to do it. If you're changing mezuzahs on these doors, so you put up a new one without a bracha, but this specific halacha is if you're going to be putting up a door. So if you're going to be putting up a door, you should wait for the door to be put up. Once the door is up, you put up the mezuzah, no problem. You can even make a bracha on it. Okay, the 14th halacha, a few minutes. A house not made for permanent dwelling <coughs> is, not, is not required to have a mezuzah. If somebody is just erecting a sukkah for the chag, for the for chag sukkah, is for sukkah, yeah, sukkah, you don't put a mezuzah. Because it's not kvius, it's not a permanent dwelling. Or a tree house. The same principle applies to. Um, sometimes you have a fair and you put up a little hut. A fair meaning a, a marketplace. So you put up a little hut and let's say it's Jewish owned. It's a Jewish fair. You don't put up a mezuzah, being that this is only a temporary establishment, so to speak. You're going to take it down the next day. There's no mezuzah. A mezuzah is dafka on a permanent dwelling. And we'll see actually the 21st halacha. Because of this halacha, there's a big difference between somebody who lives in Eretz Yisrael and somebody who lives in Chutz Laaretz when their obligation for Mezuzah starts. So Mr. Hashem will continue. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.